We sat down to interview Jerry and Denise Stigman, a couple who spend their lives traveling around the United States and the world sharing music with people. They have a lot to say about how they've seen music impact those that they work with, that they get moving and dancing and singing together. We are in awe and profoundly humbled and deeply respectful of what happens and the way community is formed through making music and moving together. It's just, I mean, we've done it many years and I'm more in awe of it than ever before. You know, the magic of music or what really happens, how we are as human beings connected with our very deep selves through the simplicity of even just making one tone and joining hands in a circle. Mm -hmm. It really is a deep thing. And you can do this with people who are really strangers to you. I was very touched by a story that I read of. It was after the Civil War, you know, our nation had been so deeply wounded from that horrendous time in our history. And as part of the healing process for a nation, they held massive sing-alongs under huge tents. And literally thousands of people would come and sing. That to me said something so profound about the place of singing in our lives as human beings. Just sing together. I had two Aunt Marys, and they both played piano by ear. So when they would come to our house, I would just beg, oh, please play the piano. And so they played all these old songs from the 1920s and 30s. They never looked at the keyboard and their hands just flew up and down. And my dad would sing, you know, and it was so much fun when Aunt Mary Davis and Aunt Mary Franklin would come over. But I remember them telling me when they were kids, my Aunt Mary Davis would sit in the living room and the piano was right there by the window and all the neighbors would come and sit on the front stoop and sing songs while she was playing piano in the living room. And that was so sweet for the neighbors to have that time together. Of course, they didn't even have televisions at that time. So they had each other, you know, and they gave each other life that way. And with my own family having gatherings, Jerry, get the guitar. And boy, the next couple hours just fly by with people singing songs together. And I think we face the possibility of losing that and maybe to some degree it has already been lost in American culture. So it's really nice to still be keeping that alive for families as we do our Music Together concerts. It's a fine tradition that should be continued no matter how sophisticated the technology gets. It's a simple treasure that cannot be replaced. so taken seeing dads free to dance with their little children it's kind of permission to really just have fun and be yeah. together it is I think it's something that we need help with now I see so many situations with Mom's pushing a stroller and she's looking at the cell phone and the baby's in their own little world or they have a device in front of them too. This is such an incredible opportunity to really be engaged with one another. It brings that sense of 
enchantment to the life of a family. They have found that there's essentially a six-year window that we get to develop our pitch and rhythmic abilities. Those first six years of our lives through actively participating in music making. I see a lot of adults, to be honest, I say getting healing of memories because many adults have shut down and they wouldn't sing in front of anybody, but they will sing with their baby, you know. And it is such a nurturing environment in the class that they get to begin to feel differently about themselves as far as being a maker of music. And it's such a beautiful thing to be healed from the scarring of when they were told, please give me a break. Just mouth the word. Yeah, all that. So that is a beautiful, very beautiful aspect of this work. And another thing is that the parents are the main influence in the music classes. The child watches their mom or dad. And if the mom or dad is singing, that's the signal to the infant, this is good. Yeah. They will mirror their parent. And again, it puts to me the parent in such a sacred position in the life of another human being. You're the one that gives them the sign, this is good. Even if, in truth, the parent can't sing and pitch, you know, they keep singing anyway, and that is the signal. And that won't affect, they worry that, oh no, if my child listens to me sing, they'll never be able to sing, you know. But that's not the case. There's a love connection there, you know. And so you are helping that child to enter into their own their fuller human nature as a music-making <clears throat> human being. And it doesn't affect their skill level. One story would be that um, a mom came up to us after one of the concerts and she had two beautiful little girls, maybe four and five years old. And she had tears streaming down her cheeks and she said, you have no idea how this has helped our family. And she said, my oldest daughter is autistic. And so when we started taking Music Together classes, it was the first time that my two little girls could actually be sisters playing together. So the music opened the door for them to have a relationship, you know. And there's many music stories that are like miracles. So that's why I really not only feel, I know, that music creates miracles and magic for us as human beings. So whoever idea it was to create music, it was a really good one. <laughs> <laughs>